Just reading from his book, Roles of Christ, Humanity, and Salvation from Insights from Theodora Mospostia. Uh, insights from Theodora Mospostia, right? It's a pretty interesting little book. It was on this part where it says that the uh, common parts upon of unity, right? Even though I don't understand I agree with it, but it, it does seem to be more biblical, to be honest. More consistent. Like it says, when Theodore speaks of a prosopon for each of the divine and human natures, and one prosopon for both, he appears to be talking in a confusing, nonsensical way. How can each nature possess its own prosopon as well as one common to both? Some insight can be drawn from the distinction that Theodore sometimes makes uh, between a inner and outer person. I'll recognize an inseparable, inseparable nexus between the two. Yeah, the problem that Theodore faces is that for all human beings except Christ, one's own person is identical with one's own hypostasis, and that since that one's outward person is also one's inner person, that the other cannot affirm that the common person is exactly the word's own person, or that of Christ's humanity. That this would mean that for him there is only one hypostasis, that is, either the word has been transformed to a human being, or Christ's humanity has been fully absorbed into the divinity. So, um, I would say that the Word has been transformed into a human being. Um, I say that because Christ is truly, like, a human being, right? But not just a human being, because He's the Logos, made flesh, born of God. So He'd be a human being, born of heaven. That would be the, the real distinction between just a man, right? Because if He was just a man, He would be like Moses, resisting the will of God, right? And you see the in the Son of God, the only begotten, there is no disobedience, yeah, because he's born of that spirit that he receives at the baptism. Do you know what I mean? So there wouldn't be a divided household. Because a divided kingdom would not stand, right? And so it says, uh, What then is the common persepon? As our general summary of the cultural connotation of persepon, right person, I guess. And our observation of how Malinia, Ma, Malani and Nere understand the meaning of person. And Paul has suggested persepon connotes the external appearance or outward form that expresses what pertains, or at least out to pertain, to one's own hypostasis and nature, because Theodore is so careful to stress the reality and completeness of Christ's two natures, it, logically, uh, it follows logically that he must allow each of the two natures to possess a possible visible manifestation of itself. So when an individual encounters Christ's, uh, Christ during his earthly life, there is one visible appearance of, for the Word and Christ's humanity. But because this common person acts in the divine human ways, uh, one can discern that this one pers common person has both a divine and human person as well as a divine and human hypostasis. As the gospel accounts reveal, Christ's outward acts point to an inner state, which is two natures are inseparably interacting as one complete visible whole. So understood, Christ's common person can in no way be regarded, regarded as truly a new composite. It cannot be regarded. It can in no way be regarded as truly a new composite. Rather, it indicates the unique relationship the divine hypostasis of the Logos has entered into with Christ's human nature. As Paul Galtier puts it, the common something, I can't read that, of Christ is thus the ultimate expression of the close conjunction which exists between Christ's humanity and the hypostasis of the Logos. Um, it says all this other stuff about the story that's defined post the appearing of a thing. But conjunctioning or something, I don't know. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't really 100% agree with all that stuff. Like, but just the idea of there being two persons in the sun, like, I, I would consider that more biblical. Um, the reason for that is because you say that the, that the the man, right, the human person, that's, that's what Adam was. That's what David is. That's what Mary is, right? Is a man born of... Uh, it's, it's a true human person, right? All the way going back to Adam, because you know, he can't just be a divine person; it has to be a true human person. But the difference is that he's logos made flesh, born through the Spirit and the Virgin. That's why I say he's uh, Adam born of heaven, right? Deified flesh or something like you know what I mean. And so that that's why there wouldn't be disobedience in him, right? And no sin, one with God, not a divided kingdom. And uh, that's why I say, like, because the problem with me with the hypostatic union is that it doesn't give salvation or make salvation possible to human persons, but because, because we are human persons, like, it's not enough for him to be God, one divine person. He has to be 
human person, right? And so that's what I'm saying. What is not assumed cannot be saved. That's why it's a problem for salvation. That's why, I mean, to me, it's like, I was thinking about it. It's like, can the God of the hypostatic union truly save you? I don't think it can. Because it did, it's not like us. He's not like us in every way. Because we are not divine persons. And that's what I said. Understanding according to the understanding according to the flesh is understanding, not just flesh. It's like in the Bible when they reach out and touch Jesus, right? They touch the body of the Word of God, right? The, uh, they touch the Word, right? But uh, that's the body of a true human person, but a true human person born of born of God, being the Logos in the flesh from all eternity. That's why he's not just a man, right? And uh, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't really, it doesn't really fit with the view of salvation I don't think it fits with the Trinity either because it says only one divine person but that's the thing though there's the Father in the Son who is not the Son and separate from the Son and how is the Father in the Son well he's in the Son through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is received at the baptism and so you have the second person of the Trinity made flesh born of heaven the wisdom of God right wisdom without measure can receive the spirit of God without measure, the spirit of wisdom, right? Because the understanding of God cannot be measured. That's what I'm saying. It's like you have two persons in the Son. Okay, so the Son does not do all of this by his own authority. All the authority is given to him. That's what the Father said. That's what the Son believes. That's why he's able to act as the Father is, right, in the flesh. Like, I mean, like being the Father's logos and stuff, with authority and stuff. Because it's permitted to him to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like fulfilling the work of Adam and stuff that, that God began in Adam and to deify humanity and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying, that uh, technically there's not one divine person, there's two divine persons. I mean, if I'm wrong, you're more than, more, you're more than welcome to correct me, you know. I'm just saying, like, uh, St. Cyril and all of them, you know, they're, that's, I mean, I think they're in error. I don't really understand Charles Don, I don't understand all that conflict between Cyril and no stories and all that. But it would be, like, more consistent to account for the second person of the Trinity in the Son, in the Logos. Because it's the living spirit indwells him. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, the new Adam, born of heaven, is the new wineskin. Can is able to receive the wine in full. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it, I just see that as Diodoret of, or uh, Diodora Masvestia, right? There's a book as I was reading. I have other books on him I just bought because, I mean, it's just to me the problem started because it's kind of weighed on me. It's like, it's like uh, in this picture, right? He's praying in the garden. It was like that bothered me because it's like, how can God pray to God, right? Stuff like that. And that I believe God gave me the answer to that. I sought him in prayer and stuff like that. I prayed to him. And then it just kind of weighed on me because I was, I was using this to argue like, for why a man is saved, how Christ saves all, right? But I couldn't say that he saved all in the human person because he didn't assume it. I said, this is a problem, it has to be. And this is like, perhaps that union, right? Cannot give you, like, cannot give you the possibility of Christ being a true human person. And I think that's dangerous because the, the Word of God became flesh. That's not just a body and a nature, that's a human person. Because what Adam was, that's what we are. And so, he truly is in the flesh, right? Born of God, of course. Deified flesh and stuff. Um, that's what I'm saying. It just, it sounded like an error. And then it's like, you know, it's, like I said, I was praying about it and it's like another problem with saying there's only one divine person. Not only does it not make room for the humanity of Jesus in person, the new Adam, but it also makes like, makes no room for the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit and the Son. Right? And so that's what I'm saying. It's like, to me, it seems like error, and uh, I, and uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't, I don't completely agree with the prosopic union, but I think you have more of the idea to account for the both the humanity and God, because it's not enough for Him to be just a divine person; He has to be human. I don't even know if assuming is the right language. Again, I'm not an expert on all that, but I'm just saying I just pray about that stuff. Um, that's all I wanted to say. That I, I would agree more with the the idea of there be, you know, two persons in Christ because we believe the Trinity. And the Trinity is three distinct persons that are separate and not each other, right? And so 
Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, in the Logos, second person of the Trinity. And together they give you the vision of the invisible God, right? So the, technically, wouldn't the common person be the Father? They share the common deity of God, right? Like the monarchy and stuff like that, the monarchy of the Father. So they would share the common person of the Father in the flesh, because together they give you the, the vision of God, right? The Son, with the Spirit, gives you the vision of God. The living Logos, living Word, with the living Spirit, give you the vision of the invisible God, right? In the flesh. And so that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know, just my thoughts. So let's bring about it. If you like the videos, you can like and subscribe if you want to. If you disagree, that's fine. You're welcome to drop a comment if you feel like it. But that's what, that's what I'm saying. I'm reminded of what my spiritual father said. That I am to reject all spurious teachings. And so I'm more than willing to be humble and admit that I'm wrong. So it's like I expect the same from others. You know what I'm saying? As I will not partake of a slanderer. Going around slandering people and lying. So that's of the devil. So I already experienced that because they say I believe in apocastasis, you say I'm an organist, and that's not true. I am not an organist. I not believe his readings. I do not get my teachings from him. You say it's uh <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. Anyway, thank you. Bye.